Welcome back. My name is Patrick Nolan. This is Pat Talks Law, Windshield Time. Once again, driving to rural county courts. It's not the best part of being a lawyer, but it does get you out of the office. What I'd like to talk to you today about is if you have hired a lawyer, talk to them. Okay? Your lawyer is going to ask you a bunch of questions about, you know, what's going on and, and things that go into the events in question. Um, they're going to want all the details they can get so they can represent you. Holding information back from your lawyer is just about the dumbest thing you can do. Because when we get surprised, you don't look good. We don't look good, but you don't look good either. So don't make the self-assessment as far as what's relevant, what's important, um, what the lawyer needs to know we need to know everything because then we can decide what's important to the case what isn't there may be defenses or um, legal strategies that you are not aware of and that we wouldn't have even mentioned if we didn't see the relevant details so Trust your lawyer. They'll keep your secrets. It doesn't matter what it is. If, you know, you had threesomes, if you liked engaging in immoral acts with farm animals, it doesn't matter. I promise you, the lawyer has heard it or something close before. And frankly, we don't care. What we care about is not being surprised when the other side says that in court. And we're like, yeah, I don't know anything about that, judge. Um, so talk to your lawyer. Tell your lawyer all the details. Tell your lawyer everything. It's a humbling um, experience. You know, just, but do it. Because when the prosecutor says, oh, and by the way, during your bond motion while we're trying to get you out of jail, yeah, we found this news report out of freaking Arizona or something where my client, and this is not a real client, this is all hypothetical by the way, where my client was charged with having sex with a horse. Uh, you know, that may not be relevant to the immediate charge, but it's certainly going to cast them in a bad light, especially after I just got finished telling the court that my client had no previous convictions. So, or no previous arrests. And the essence of this is, is you've got to talk to your lawyer. They need correct information. Because once things start coming incorrect... The court isn't going to assume that the lawyer is lying to the court. The court's going to assume that you lied to your lawyer. Um, unless the court has a history of the lawyer. Well, then all bets are off. And even if you come clean, it may not help you. So, talk to your lawyer. Tell your lawyer everything. Write it down and hand it to them. It's attorney-client confidentiality, okay? It's not going to get out, but your lawyer needs to know, and they need to know the truth. <clears throat> now, in a criminal case, when I say your lawyer needs to know the details and they need to know the truth, they do not want you to fucking confess to them, okay? Don't confess that you committed the crime to your lawyer unless you are planning to seek the best deal possible because after you confess to your lawyer that you did it unequivocally without question yeah I did it I can't put you on the stand 
I can't put you on the stand and say you didn't do it. I can't suborn perjury. Believe me when I say this, your criminal defense attorney does not want to know, does not want to know that you did it, okay? We already suspect, everybody already suspects. Brother, you've been arrested and charged. People suspect that you did it. They think you might have. Your defense attorney is gonna punch holes in the prosecution's attack, in the prosecution's theory. That's our job. But don't tell us that you did it. Don't tell anybody that you did it. Okay? You have the right to remain silent. Shut the fuck up. It's Friday. Check out Pop Brothers at Law. They have their Shut the Fuck Up Fridays. Love it. The guys are great. Now, remember, don't tell your defense attorney you did it. Don't tell the police you did it. If you're arrested with a baggie of a green substance that looks and smells like marijuana based on the training and experience of the police officer, don't admit it's marijuana. They got to prove it. So be smart. Be quiet. Don't admit the crime. <laughs> Give your attorney all the relevant facts, all the facts of the case, okay? But don't tell him for a fact that you did it. I don't ask you that question. A lot of other attorneys probably don't. I don't want the answer. If I think you might have done it, I can still put you on the stand. If I'm pretty sure you probably did it, I can put you on the stand. If, you know, I can't see any other way than you committed this offense, I can still put you on the stand. But if I know that you did it, I can't ask you any questions. You can still take the stand, but then I have to tell the prosecutor and the judge you're going to be testifying a narrative, and that's code word for my lying motherfucking client who's going to take the stand and lie. Uh, so, yeah. Don't tell me that you did it. Now, that said, We have another episode of Layperson's Law School coming out this weekend. This one's uh, a bit more complex. I hear you. I understand the first two were, were rather dumbed down. It's going to start coming up in intellectual rigidity uh, going forward because we're going to get into more complex concepts. You know, things that you should know if you've hired a lawyer, things that, so you can track how your case is going, things you should know if you're going to attempt to represent yourself. Um, and we're going to touch on big things. We're not going to... Watching this video is not going to make up for the entire semester that a lawyer spent in evidence class. Or make up for the years of practice and training afterwards that they participated in to be able to actually practice law. Um, and people learn things about evidence every day. Lawyers learn things about evidence every day. So this is not going to be the, you know, hell, I know everything a lawyer knows. Please don't take that. But it is going to give you a basis of understanding of what is evidence, what are sources of proof, and how to present that, and some basic attacks when someone is presenting it against you. So, thank you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the alert bell so you can see when we have these new things coming out, and I'll be talking to you later. Bye.